officer's son. What luscious lips. Amongst other things. Crichton was a very lucky man. Where is it? Gone. Gambled and lost. How unfortunate you must lose as well. Poor Aaron has gone through so much on this show and it was part of the appeal of taking the role in the first place. I just felt that she had an incredible arc, potentially. And that was probably realized in season three, which was the hardest year for Aaron emotionally and for me as an actor, an incredible opportunity. Um, so in that season, she chooses to go over to Talon with one of the Crichtons who's been cloned, falls in love with him, meets her mother, who is chasing after her, has to walk away from her mother's assassination because she knows that her mother has to be killed, only to find after John has died, the love of her life, practically in her arms, that her mother is still alive. I'm surprised to see your old mum. This isn't quite the family reunion you'd imagined. So I'd say in The Choice, Erin goes through such an incredible myriad of emotions but seemingly is so numb that she can't even take on the magnitude of it. Was it easy to be a hero? Leave me behind. You never think you're gonna die. I didn't know. You... you did. No. Yes. Dead. Finally, in, in season three, yielding and allowing herself to fall in love, having him die, meeting a mum, it not going terribly well, <laughs> then dropping a mum off the side of a building. Um, after she accidentally gets shot by Kreis, and then having to reunite with the other John, I'd say they, those things were the most major parts of her development, and they all happened in season three. Apart from meeting him in the first place and, and no longer being able to be a peacekeeper, that's probably the other milestone. My name's John. <laughs> What is your rank and regiment? Exactly how much time have you spent with this human? Hold alien, hold. Present hands. Not a lot. Not much at all. Hands now! Because as you know, Peacekeeper High Command has very clear parameters regarding contact with unclassified alien life forms. You may have very well exceeded those parameters, officers, soon, which no, would make sir, you I... irreversibly contaminated. No, sir, I... Take them away. Take them all away. I think David Kemper and Rockney O'Bannon and Brian Hansen had some ideas about where they wanted the show to go, and I think Sci-Fi Channel definitely had some input as well. Uh, but if you want something, you know, it's, it's like life, you have to be willing to go with the flow. So they had to watch and see how we developed as actors and how the characters were developing based on the choices we were making, how we were bringing these characters yeah. to life. For someone who used to look down her nose at tech work, you're pretty damn good at this. Well, perhaps people can change. Well, at least some people are smiling around here these days. Yeah, I know. It suits your face. I was talking about you. Me? I'm not smiling. Yes, you are. Pay attention to your work. Right. Focus on the work. And don't do that. I'm working here. Stop distracting me. I'm distracting you. Yes, you are always distracting me. Well, then you are easily distracted. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, that's a little distracting. And it's not Since a lot of the emphasis is on character in the show rather than story, the, we didn't change the course of the show. We were just part of its growth. <laughs> There's something about the two of those characters that we've asked the audience to invest in, which is about inexorability and the fact that I think they're destined to be together. And I think it is a romance farscape, and that's how Ben and I have always chosen to, uh, to do the show. 
um, as an intelligent romance. That doesn't mean that they're always intelligent, they've been very childish with each other, but they've developed and grown, and I think that's been such an incredible experience for me working on the show. That I think they'd always planned. I think that the producers had always hoped that in their imaginations and their hearts that Crichton and Aaron would always be together. So that's the way I choose to think it was all planned. They always met, you know, from the moment they met. It was destiny. I shouldn't be here. This is exactly where you should be. I love you. I love you too. Ben and I made a decision that we wanted to pull out and expand on as many romantic elements of the storytelling on Farscape as possible. Uh, so one of the episodes that he wrote, Green-Eyed Monster, is, a, is an example. He, um, he exactly. chose to do the story primarily about Aaron in the corner of the triangle, the love triangle. Where are you going? You heard the man, nothing for me to do. John, wait. Aaron, you do not want me there. I, I do want you there. Why? To throw rice? Forget about it. I've seen my share of hardware insertion. I'm not watching. It's been modified. Yeah, I heard that. Less invasive. It's, it's safer. Yes, it's new. It's improved. It's the finger of friendship. 1995. But wait, kids, there's more. What's the matter with you? This is the right thing to do. For who? For all of us. He needs my help to control Talon to get us out. Aaron, do what you have to do. I will. Fine, but do not sugarcoat it for me. Right thing to do, my ass. And what's that supposed to mean? It means that you do things the way you want to, when you want to, with who you want to do them. It's got nothing to do with what I want. It's always about what you want. So there are a lot of elements. that used to come into the storytelling about um, love triangles, um, sometimes unrequited love. That was a, a major theme with Crace and Aaron. The man who sort of basically deems her irreversibly contaminated witnesses in the flashback of the way we weren't as we, as we learned that, that she had basically ratted on her, her lover um, to get promoted. Back to prowler detail. <laughs> Uh, so Erin learned the hard way about love in that, You're under in that uh, situation. She was Please, frightened of, of it. So when she meets Crichton, she has a lot to learn about what it could do and how it can change her life. And then when he dies, it almost destroys her and she goes back to being what she knows, which is a cold, hard peacekeeper, because it's the way they've always been trained. So it's a really interesting, thematically, the concept of love in the story is, is, is fascinating because it's about a woman who's been told she's not allowed to. And then despite herself and despite everything, she cannot help but fall for this man who softens her and teaches her how to actually love properly, um, if there is a proper way to love. Um, and then, you know, the themes with Dargo and Shiana and, and everything, everything comes at a cost. That's the other thing about love on Farscape. There's always a price to pay and you always have to make a choice between one person or another and you choose one person and the other person will die or they'll be heartbroken or there'll be some intergalactical disaster of, you know, the proportions and the scales were always huge on the show. So, yeah, love was always at the center of a very dynamic story. I had this life. I liked it. It had rules. I followed the rules. And that made everything right. And then you come along and you throw everything up. This strange human with arrogant stubbornness. You are like a plague, John Crichton, and you have ruined my life. And yet I just keep coming back. <laughs> 